It's probably the three key things to get the film look. So the curve and the highlights and the whites, the color. So that they're probably the three things I see the most. And we'll go over heaps of examples that I've seen over the last year or so of people getting the film look. You guys can also download this image and follow along get the settings as well these are different ways people go about it but now that I've, I've seen so many different editing styles now and different ways different people get a similar but different film look because there's different film stocks the commonalities and differences so you can get the film look as well because things are so digital nowadays so sharp so clinical so digital looking people want the softness and the character and the feeling of film nowadays okay so it seems like everyone wants to know how to get the film look now i've had like 10 photographers through the course teach the film look and there's really common patterns i see we have josh ball linus Kelly, and there's a few others that really do a really good job of recreating this film look so i'll teach you the commonalities i often see from these guest editors because when you see different perspectives different ways of editing from a lot of people you really start to see why these uh, certain techniques work so i wanted to give a filmic look to this shot here for editing a bit of inspiration definitely comes from cam and the guest editors so if we just go to one of her shots so for example this is one of cam guest editor lessons i love how filmic her stuff looks and this is just a really good example of shadows reset very subtle editing to get the film look kelly taylor does a really good job as well recreating film colors especially this is before and after she really brings back the greens which is very common for film emma here did a really good job of recreating that high-end wedding film look shooting digital and another one of kelly matching her film edit and this was emma recreating her film look super nice blues and skin tones and then i quite like this one so this so when you go in for the film look a curve like this is very common as well so really taking down the highlights and quite often you bloom the mids so not so much here the mids get very bloomed common way i see it or the other common way i often see is a curve like this you bring down those highlights creating a really filmic look but even Dean and the guest editors so very subtle editing but that little bit of like overexposure in the mids so many ways to go about it so the settings is what not to do with really high ISO a super fast shutter shutter should come down ISO should also come down but uh so it's quite grainy so I was thinking of doing curves a bit like Cam and the guest editors because I really liked who curves so i actually go back to her image uh, copy and paste her settings you guys can do this too if you enroll get the raw images and the lessons from all these amazing editors follow along step by step okay we're back here with our image you guys can also download this image and follow along and you'll get the settings as well okay so we've got this curve here that gives the nice matte look quite filmic don't think we need the shadows like hers though everyone wants the film look nowadays and that's because everyone's over really edited images and they want it to look a lot more natural so everyone's sort of gravitating to film so editing is even more important now because you have to be very precise personally i just like to add a tiny bit of that matte matted look in a curve like this just like the contrast and the highlights you get that flatness to the highlights and josh ball does this quite a few do it but i've seen to get the film look in a different way people do the opposite where they bloom the mids bring down the whites point for this one i thought i'd just do this warmth is very common portrait 400 and everything warmth seems to be very filmic a bit on the green side so maybe you have your tint helping the green side and then I think you could get away with it looking quite a bit like film. Probably enable profile correction. And I've seen, I think, Emma Pilkington from the guest editors really upped the texture to her images. We've already got a lot of grain because we shot at ISO 12,000. So there's just some takeaways to get a filmic look like this. Subtle, remember, keep it subtle. Curve like this or the other curve where you bloom the mids 
take down the whites. It's another way people do it. A lot of landscape photographers go for that really silky smooth look with really high black point on the curves and it slowly smooths out towards the highlights. Check out martintrader.com. There is free curve presets, a few free trainings, um, and check out all the guest editors and follow the course Instagram page. Another thing is for the filmic look, it's probably just a touch of split turning, so a bit of warmth. If your image isn't naturally warm, you might want to put a greenish blue in the shadows because if you just drop temperature or up temperature you'll just split those two warm colors and yeah the settings are a bit crazy because we were running around shooting a lot of film a bit of video and just real quickly i'd probably do things with object i tend to go really easy on this because even though it looks better to the eye somehow it just makes it look less natural yeah a little bit of extra contrast in the subject we don't need brightness really straighten some stuff vertical but yeah we've got a few more guest editors coming so follow the instagram page and dm me who you want to see as a guest editor get the raw image the preset and the lesson because that's how you learn really fast that's how i learned if you've struggled with presets you might want to get the raw image the lesson and the tutorial so you have confidence that you're not missing any of the steps in the editing process but yeah i'll leave it for this one 